Welcome to my channel if you are new and welcome back if you're one of my regular channel watchers or if you're new-ish to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to start the series that I mentioned in my update video last week when I talked about how I decided to start making videos about me going through the process of basically starting from scratch and learning how to organize my home in a way that is sustainable and that gives me more time and more clarity and just a better ease of living. And I know that sounds like a fantasy to some of us and sounds like basic stuff to some people watching this video. Some of you are gonna be like, Susie, you are a friggin' pig, like your house is disgusting. And some of you are gonna be like, that is not even bad. What are you talking about? I'm going to format a lot of these videos into clean with me style videos. And those are videos that you may have come across on YouTube before. Uh, the reason that I'm doing that is because they're videos that I really enjoy and videos that have really helped me to clean and organize my home in the past. So these clean with me videos are intended to have a little bit of an intro and then we start to tackle areas of our home together. You can watch them and then go tackle that area of your house and get inspiration from the video, motivation from the video, or you can have it on on the TV while you clean and we can clean together. Um, or you can also listen to it, almost like the way you would listen to a podcast. So you can put your headphones on and listen to me talk, almost like a podcast, while you clean your home. And that is the value in these videos. I'm hoping that these aren't just entertaining. I'm hoping that I can do for some of you what other YouTubers have done for me when I was really, really struggling with even, even knowing where to start with my home. And I guess that's what I will get into next. So I'm gonna kinda of talk about where I am right now um, and then we're going to get into a bit of an action item and then I'm going to talk a little bit about the past and a little bit about where I see my home in the future. Almost five years ago now, somebody gave me KonMari's book, The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up, and I really bought into it and I did the entire, I read the book from beginning to end, and I did the entire KonMari method on my entire house. All the categories, you know, piling all like items together and going through all my clothes and all of that. And after kind of going through that process and seeing like the huge benefits of that, but then also seeing some of the negatives or some of the cautionary points that I'm going to discuss on this channel about going through a process like that. After going through all of that, the biggest takeaway that I got from that was that it is attainable to have a home where you feel like that ease of living. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit more without getting into too much detail in this video because we have so many videos to talk about this stuff. But up until about a year after I decluttered my entire home, I had a year where my house stayed tidy. First time in my entire life, and I'm going to get to, you know, how I lived before that uh, momentarily, and we'll probably end up talking about that a lot on this channel. But anyway, I would say a year after I decluttered my house, I was able to maintain a clean home, and it was because I greatly reduced the amount of things that I had in my house, and also I developed that system that we all know about, which is everything has one specific place to go to. And I was also watching a lot of YouTube videos about people's like clean with me nighttime routine. People would clean up for 15 minutes in the evening after their kids went to bed. And I would listen to those videos like a podcast and I would clean my house. And by cleaning my house for 15 minutes a day, and keeping down on the clutter and doing laundry every other day instead of saving it all to the end of the week by, you know, taking on some of these habits. My house was cleaner and I also just felt like I was so much less overwhelmed by day-to-day -day life. I just felt like my house was more peaceful, like I had more time, I had more mental clarity. 
and that lasted for about a year and it was wonderful and then I feel like Wilson was about not even quite a year and a half and we started trying to have another baby and I went through a series of miscarriages I was in the hospital I wasn't feeling well and I was really down in the dumps and in a rut and things just snowballed to being almost back to where they were but with less stuff so that was five years ago so for about a year you know things were great and then for the last four years they have been not so great if you're looking behind me you're probably thinking Susie you are full of it your house looks very tidy and I just want to tell you <laughs> that it is not and I promise you that on this channel and during this video series you are gonna see my entire house you are gonna see the good the bad and the ugly um, I told you in my update video that I was gonna start making videos about me like trying to organize my house because I just feel like I am always cleaning and I was as I was like sitting down for a break for a second I was just thinking to myself like I'm in my house by myself again cleaning kind of procrastinating by reading YouTube comments but my husband and my kids are gone for a walk and it is absolutely gorgeous outside so instead of doing that with them which my husband was like don't clean don't just come come with us for a walk but I couldn't because I felt too overwhelmed um, instead of doing that I'm just cleaning my house and my house is actually significantly cleaner than it normally is because I was going through a process of doing some like deep cleaning over the weekend when I had this like light bulb moment that I was gonna start making videos about my house but I'm just gonna show you what it looks like right now and this is like kinda of what I'm dealing with now some of you are gonna be like Susie you are a friggin pig like your house is disgusting and some of you are gonna be like that is not even bad what are you talking about but I'm just saying for me like it's it's just a lot it's it's way too much for me to do every single night at the end of the night and not be able to enjoy like relaxing with my kids so anyway I'm gonna turn the camera around also I didn't pencil in my eyebrows I just emptied the garbage that's why there's an extra garbage bag on the floor shit on the counter not too bad stuff in the sink not too bad I just filled up the dishwasher so like this sink was completely full of dishes I'm sorry it's dark in here like why is there a phone plugged in right next to my stove random top for a water bottle at least those dishes on my stove are clean um, normally there is a massive pile of shoes right here like you can't even walk in my front door because I have no closet but my husband just built this thing like what the heck okay I'm gonna go find them hi I was just gonna come find you guys. Yeah. Where's Will? Yeah. Where's Willow? I was gonna come find you guys and I was gonna make a video. Oh my god. That's what we saw. What? A double rainbow. You didn't. Yes. Where? Um where? Um where where is the result of the at, at the field. field. Yeah. I think it was so awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, that's a... you want oh my that? god, is that the rainbow? Yeah. That looks crazy. In my kitchen. Okay? Didn't get rid of the garbage bags yet. Depending on how you live, you might think that my house looks totally fine for somebody who has two kids and that's okay. Or you might think that my house looks trashed, right? But what's important is like how we feel in our space and I just don't want to feel like every single day I have to re-clean my house. Like I just spent three whole days pretty much ignoring my family and just decluttering and cleaning for hours and staying up late at night and getting burnt out and being exhausted. So I did that Friday, Saturday and Sunday. And then it's Friday again, so by the end of the work week, my house is trashed again. The other thing that I think is valuable to some of you is that I just have a regular home. I have a regular, small home that I really love. 
I don't have all kinds of new fancy stuff or fancy vacuums or whatever. I'm hoping that uh, a lot of you can relate to me and, and relate to my approach on this channel. So that's where I am right now. And where I'm hoping to go is to a place with better ease of living, to a place where I can tidy up for, you know, 15 or 20 minutes in the evening and then wake up to a clean home and to be able to tidy up for a little bit in the morning and go to work and then come home to a clean home. Within reason, again, I don't need to live in a house that looks like a minimalist's house. I just need it to be tidy and feel comfortable and for me not to feel completely overwhelmed. And before I talk about a time that I felt completely overwhelmed, I think we're gonna get into the cleaning part of this video. You're watching this right now. If you clicked on it, it's probably because you have some similar struggles to the struggles I have, and that is keeping your home clean and organized. And so depending on how much motivation and time you have right now, I want you to pick something in your house. Uh, I want you to pick either a junk drawer or a bin um, or a cover, just one place. If you have no motivation, don't do it. If you have a little teeny tiny bit of motivation, you can pick something that's already relatively clean and just go in and do a little bit of maintenance. Or if you feel really motivated like I feel lately, I want you to pick a junk drawer or a cupboard that's full of Tupperware containers and crap. Let's pick either one drawer or one little bin, storage bin, or one cupboard that's full of Tupperware containers, pick one thing in your home and let's just go through it together while I talk for the next 10 minutes. Uh, over the next 10 minutes, I'm gonna go through my history with clutter and mess and chaos and disorganization and we're gonna get a little bit deep and hopefully you feel really good after this because you're gonna get something done. What I want you to do is choose the drawer or the bin or the cupboard that you're gonna clean. Something that should only take between one minute and like a half hour at the most. If you have to, pause the video right now and set your phone up near the place that you're gonna declutter. The other thing that you may need is if your house is really cluttered and you don't really have any clean surface areas right now, I know all of us are different. I cleaned off my counter before I did this so I could pile things on the counter, but if you don't have a clean surface then take an empty laundry basket or a cardboard box or a small table over with you because you're going to need a place to put all of the things temporarily while you clean and wipe out the area that you're organizing. So pause the video, get set up and then come back. What I want to do is make sure that I completely empty the drawer. That's the most important thing instead of doing what I typically do which is get frustrated when I'm looking for something and can't find something and just move things around a little bit or take a few things out of it that definitely don't belong there. Nope, we want to feel real good at the end of this video. So we're going to take every single thing out of it and wipe it out, whether it's a drawer or a cover. You might have to vacuum in there. You might have to wipe it. You might have to spray something in there and clean it. Uh, but for this drawer, it just needs to be wiped out with a little bit of water. And then I'm going to dry it as well. And I'm piling everything on the counter and then I'm going to look through everything that's on the counter and I'm either going to put it in the drawer neatly because this, my friends, is the junk drawer and it will always be the junk drawer. I know I said that I had six junk drawers, but I really only have one true junk drawer or miscellaneous drawer. We should call it now. We're right fancy. Um, but I only have one miscellaneous drawer. And then the rest of them are just imposters. They're just random drawers that are trying to be junk drawers, like the drawer where my utensils are has junk drawery type stuff in it. The drawer that has like my spatulas and my like bigger utensils, that's got junk drawer stuff in it. I have a drawer in my bedroom that's a junk drawer. There's junk everywhere. But this is going to remain the junk drawer. I don't want to keep tools and hardware type things in it that should be owed in the garage with Jeff's tools, just things that I use in the house, like crazy glue, nails, there's thumbtacks in here, staples, uh, there's a flathead screwdriver, which is a screwdriver that I use in the house semi-regularly. There are a few hardware-y type items that are going to stay in this drawer. There are things that aren't going to stay in this drawer, like I have uh, thank you cards in this drawer and envelopes. And sure, maybe you want to keep those things in your miscellaneous drawer, but I also happen to have uh, a box 
that is specifically made to keep cards and envelopes in. And that is downstairs. And it shouldn't be downstairs. I'm going to find a home for that, I promise. But I do know that the cards and envelopes are going to go into that box. There are also like Legos and little small toys in here that I'm not willing to get rid of or throw out. They're actual little pieces of toys that my kids still play with that I found on the floor and I didn't want to vacuum up, so I stuck them in this drawer. This is like the catch-all drawer. Um, and there is change in here and batteries and all kinds of stuff. So basically what I'm doing is I'm deciding I'm taking it all out and I'm only putting the things back into the drawer that belong in the drawer and I'm putting them in there neat and tidy. Phone chargers and small cords, like the charger for my son's Fitbit, stuff like that, in the drawer. Batteries, in the drawer. Uh, small hardware items, in the drawer. Birthday candles, in the drawer. If there was a roll of tape, it would go in this drawer. It's probably in with my silverware. As I mentioned, in these videos, I'm going to talk. I will probably do a combination of talking and some music once I get back into my subscription for the non-copyright music. Um, I can't stand using the music that comes with my editing software because I just think it's overused on YouTube and a lot of it is really annoying. <laughs> so I'm going to get some better music, I promise. But for today's video, I'm going to tell you guys a story. And the reason I'm sharing all of this is because I feel like some of you either might be interested in learning some of my deep, dark secrets and also because it might be therapeutic for some of you and it is definitely therapeutic for me to talk about this. But anyway, not unlike many of us. Um, I feel like I had two lives. So there's like this version of me that a lot of you know, or, or know, you know, a little bit about from my YouTube channel. I'm a very like open and honest person, but there's this, this new me. Um, and then up until probably a year before I met my husband, I was not really the same person. Um, and I think it all started kind of coming to a head when I was 18. And again, a lot of this is typical teenager stuff. Um, but my parents were divorced and I lived with my mother. Um, and I'm not going to get into too many details about my mom or our relationship, but it was a really challenging living situation for me. Um, and I decided to move out on my own when I was 18. Now, when I moved out on my own when I was 18, I had a full-time job working at the YMCA, and I worked at the front desk, and I worked as a trainer, and I taught fitness classes. And honestly, I really feel like fitness is what kept me on the straight and narrow. The hardest part for me was that for whatever reason, I needed to be able to prove that I could make it on my own and that I was independent. And I absolutely wasn't prepared for that. So I didn't know how to maintain a clean space or manage my life, like paying my bills, doing income taxes, right? This is something that my parent that I had just lived with struggled with, except for the, the mess part. My, my house was always very tidy. Like my mom was a stay-at-home mom for the most part, and her house was really, really clean. But she really struggled a lot with like her mental health and finances and um, like alcoholism. And now that I'm older, I feel like she may have had an eating disorder. But it's really hard to talk about. I mean, she's in her 70s and comes from the generation where you didn't really talk a whole lot about your feelings or whatever. But anyway, I came from that environment. Now suddenly I'm on my own. And I did not know how to manage anything. I was never taught about money or how to keep a home clean or anything like that. So I lived by myself, just so desperate to prove to the world that I could be independent and that I was an adult. And I was consistently failing. So I sort of removed myself from my parents. When I when I look back now, uh, some of it is very sad um, because I had parents that loved me. So I had my mom, who I lived with, 
And although she had her problems, like she loved me. She would give me the shirt off her back if I asked for it. I just wouldn't ask for it. And then I also had my dad and my stepmom, who I adore, who, again, would do pretty much anything for me. But I chose to be isolated. And my living situation quickly became like something that you would see uh, on a hoarder show. The only reason that it didn't get to the point where like you wouldn't be able to like go in the bathroom and stuff like that is because I was so young. I was so young that I um, didn't have the time to accumulate tons and tons and tons of stuff. So although there was like tons of mail and papers and clothes and whatever everywhere, there wasn't enough stuff that I couldn't move around my apartment. But it was absolutely like completely embarrassing, soul-crushing, messy, filthy, dirty, dirty dishes with food on them and probably bugs and like just really gross, right? Mice. Okay, I lived downtown. I mean, even if you lived in a newer home downtown, uh, prone to mice where I live because I live down like I live down by the water down by the harbor okay not making excuses but I'm just telling you it was really gross so what would happen was I just went into this absolute denial like denial about how I was living at home denial about my feelings about it so I was starting to experience anxiety and depression, but I had this ability to like completely disassociate, I don't even know if that's the right word, from what I was actually thinking and feeling like in the night sometimes when I was alone, I was able to just push that all down and just go about my life and pretend to myself and other people for the most part that I was really happy. Oh, I'm just a slob. It's not a big deal. And again, I worked at a gym. I was eating relatively well when I had food. Um, I seemed to be happy. Personally, like my personal hygiene was great. No problems with that. And so it was just this basically me living in in this mess that was the only thing I think that would be really out of the ordinary about me and what would happen is it would get so bad that like I wouldn't let anyone come over um, I would pretend I wasn't home if people would show up and all that kind of stuff and then it would get so bad and my feelings and emotion and my anxiety would finally come to like a boiling point and I would call my dad or my stepmom, I should say, I would call my stepmom and just cry, like hyperventilate cry on the phone. And no matter what I said, she would come over, her and my dad, and they, there's probably been four times in my life that they came over and were so, I'm going to ball. <laughs> Thank God I'm not on camera. They were like just so wonderful and they would clean my entire house or my entire apartment top to bottom take me out buy me a meal talk to me ask me if I needed anything right and then they would kind of leave me be and check on me as I would feel so much shame and so much embarrassment leading to me finally breaking down and calling them or asking for help that by the time they got there and helped me with the cleanup I would be so relieved and just feel like this huge weight was lifted off me and that I could breathe and I would do really well and try to maintain it for a period of time. But in the back of my mind, the whole time, I was always anxious and afraid and knew that eventually it was going to go back to the way it was. So there was that. And then my first relationship that I was in, I ended up falling in love with this man, madly in love with him. And I was like in my early 20s, like I might have been 21 or maybe even younger. And he was just a couple years older than me. Like if I was, he's probably three years older than me. Um, and I was, I just worshiped the ground he walked on. That's another story. <laughs> and we moved in together. 
or he moved in with me, I should say. And uh, he was really neat and tidy and clean and took really good care of his things. And so I was able to pretend that I was clean for a period of time because I felt like I was living this lie and this is was going to be the thing and he was going to leave me if he found out that I was disorganized and all of this kind of stuff. And I created this scenario where I always felt anxious and uncomfortable in my own house at all times. <clears throat> After a while, I would I kind of let things slip and our uh, apartment did get a little bit more messy and we would kind of argue about it, but it never really came to a head or became a thing. And he used to travel for work all the time. And one time he went away, I think for a month, and he came home two weeks earlier than he was supposed to or a week earlier than he was supposed to. And what I would normally do when he traveled is the house would get completely destroyed and look like somebody trashed it. And then a couple of days before he came home, I would clean the entire thing like top to bottom. I burned myself out physically and mentally. It was just, it was an awful cycle, but this is what I was doing. So anyway, this one time he came home after being away for a month early to surprise me and I wasn't even home and walked in and saw our house and we had already been together for like three years and I was like keeping this secret from him and he comes home and there's nobody home and walks in and our house looked like horrendous okay and he really reacted very strongly to that again I don't have time to really get into that in this video, but I feel like I'm going to get into some of these stories in depth um, in some of my other cleaning videos. But um, it was, it was tough. Um, and we stayed together probably for almost another five years after that. And uh, it wasn't the most, and it definitely was not like a healthy relationship. And then, I don't know what happened to me, maybe it was age or experience or whatever, but I had this light bulb moment, I think when I was about 26 or 27, that I really had the power to change my life. And then I started on this personal and professional development journey that I feel like I'm still on. I'm in a different place now. I'm in a better situation. I am a lot more introspective and I have a healthy dose of reality. I know that it is not my job as a mom and a woman and a person <laughs> to keep my house clean at all times. Um, my house doesn't need to look like a show home. I really think that I have realistic expectations for what my house should and will and could look like. The upstairs of my house gets trash, as you saw in the video, but it's never dirty. Um, but my basement is real, real bad, and so I want to tackle that as well. I also want to declutter my drawers and my closets and my email inboxes and my furnace room and our garage and my car and everything that I have and I would like to document that and go through some of that with you so well look at us now guys look we got one drawer or one thing done today and if you didn't that's okay too but uh, I'm really happy with the progress and if you have to do things more than once that's okay too just do whatever you can do Maybe you didn't clean something while I went through my story, but maybe you feel like doing it right now, or maybe you want to wait until my next video, which I will post very soon. Man, that feels good to get something done. If you manage to declutter or clean a drawer or a cover or a basket or something, please let me know in the comments section below. If you have any ideas or questions or suggestions for content that you would like me to make in the future related to these topics, also let me know in the comment section below. If you're new to my channel, let's play a game. It's called Try to Guess Where Susie's Weird Accent is From. Um, please 
take your guess in the comments section below. I always get a kick out of those. Anyway, give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and a big ol' thumbs down if you didn't like it. Subscribe to my channel and I will see you very soon in my next Clean With Me video. Bye.